everyone welcome back to my channel uh, today I would like to uh, sort of resume a little bit learn a move from pro series uh, I know the series kind of ended a long time ago um, but recently I found a super nice game uh, that I would really want to illustrate you uh, some of the great ideas um, and uh, obviously the the series that suits the best is learn a move from pro um, so this is a game played between Yu Zhiyin and Ke Jie. So Yu Zhiyin is, uh, um, at least back a few years ago, uh, she she was the uh, best female Go player in China. And uh, her, I guess her rank in, in the world is also quite high, uh, definitely in the top 100, right? So this is this is a men and, a men and women combined, so top 100, is, it's pretty good. Um, so, uh, so yeah, let's get started. So Eugene is playing as black and uh, we started out with this very nice um, Joseki. At this point, um, you know, everything is very normal. Like I really suggest my viewers to play like this as black. Uh, it's very clear what you're doing, right? Very nice 15 point corner um, and also the potential to you know, gain a little bit of profits by uh, invading inside this three space extension. So today I want to sort of introduce you kind of the follow up. Uh, so in the actual game, Koji made a high space, high three space extension, but uh, in case of three, a low three space extension, uh, Black's correct follow up is to also pincer low. Um, if white does not respond, uh, later on, black has the opportunity uh, to directly hop into the corner. Uh, when white attaches, black can extend on the second line. This creates a Mi situation. Uh, black's trying to connect back at S6 and also connect back at S10. So if white blocks this option, we can Hane Atari and then uh, we're able to uh, play out this one. So even if Black's two stones dies inside, Black is Black is able to gain tremendous influence on the outside, and that's going to be a leading game uh, for Black. So let's say, for example, if White keeps going like this, uh, Black is able to double Hane, uh, and this is really annoying for uh, for White because White has to use this way uh, to kill uh, Black inside. <clears throat> so, so black is able to gain way too much, right? And then white ex uh, black expand onto the top side, uh, and this this is going to become a huge scary influence uh, that is going to give white a very very hard time. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, white's territory is just not large at all. So that's what happens when your opponent tries to cut you off. Uh, what if your opponent? Uh, place Q9, uh, then obviously we can comfortably extend extend our territory and also um, making sure that white is floating uh, on top. So that's a very nice follow-up. So today we'll also talk about you know the follow-up for uh, this type of situation. So for example, if white also decides to Tanuki, Mm, what is going to be the follow-up uh, inside here, right? How does black continue? So the correct move, you can memorize this, um, is to play Q8. Uh, this is a very hard to deal with move. Um, actually, I was checking with Leela. Maybe I didn't run. Uh, maybe I didn't run it enough times, but Leela found Leela found it really really hard to deal with. So. Normally, you would just think, hey, I can just attach and connect back. Black is going to honey. White has to cut. Black Atari is on the second line, and then white is forced to connect. And then black can pull the stone back at R10. Uh, this is a very annoying uh, variation for white. Uh, I definitely don't want to be uh, white at this point. Mm, so first of all, white cannot honey, because when black cuts, there's a mi I, so black is gonna ladder at p9 and black is gonna ladder at s11. So um, 
for example, if white extend, uh, we're able to ladder this. And obviously, if white, you know, fix this, we can ladder this stone. And then this is all pretty much territory for black. Uh, so this is not acceptable at all for white. So if white does not honey and whites just simply come back and fix, black is able to uh, play the Q11. Um, so this is a this is also very uncomfortable for white, right? Because black gained so much territory, and then white is is okay. Like this group is okay, but it's not it's not the definition of a life group. It doesn't have two eyes as of yet. So later on, as things happen on the outside, this group can enter uh, in danger. So this is a very, very difficult move to deal with, right? So uh, whenever your opponent places three space extension, uh, you can play Q12, uh, wait for him. And then if it doesn't respond, you hop right in. Uh, and this is a super hard to deal with move. Um, so for, th for for my fans who really, I know some of fans really like this kind of uh, kick and jump Joseki or attach and jump Joseki. Uh, this is your uh, nice follow up uh, in this case. Uh, a lot of times you can just immediately destroy your opponent right there um, if they're not careful. So um, so what's gonna be uh, like the correct defense? Uh, I don't really know as of yet. I think uh, an interesting way you can deal with this is to squeeze here, um, force the corner exchange, and then you still play out this one. Uh, but th this is kind of like suggested by Leela that you uh, just push here and then uh, go for a sacrifice, right? You cut and then extend, that's a sacrifice because you can't really survive here. But what you can do instead is to uh, play out things like this. Uh, this is a sente, right? If black tries to extend out, uh, white can turn and then black is dead. So black obviously has to fix and then you come back and fix this very deadly stone uh, at Q8. So this is a uh, sort of influence versus territory, uh, but I personally strongly prefer black because I love to have cash on hand. Uh, and then this kind of influence, what it can do, uh, we're not sure yet, right? And for humans, it's easier to manage territory rather than influence. So that's gonna be sort of your secret weapon, right? If you see a position like this, uh, don't even hesitate, all right? Hop right in and then 90% of chances, like, I mean, as long as your opponent is not like a, a seven dan or, or something like he, he won't play very accurate here uh, likely you can enter into this position even with very good players right as long as they're not professional or seven dan uh, they're likely going to settle with this that but at this point i can tell you that your win rate is about you know it's it's at about 60 percent so uh, as block you started out with 40 43 and then you're at 60 that's a very nice um that's a very nice uh, turning point, actually. Uh, mostly because how much territory you're able to develop. But that's actually not our main topic for today, but I find it to be really useful uh, for my uh, for my viewers to know the follow-ups um, because this happens all the time uh, in your games after this Joseki. Today we'll talk about um, the when when black pincers here, Kojie decided to take immediate action first. Uh, this is what I really like uh, from Kojie. So let's look at what happens in the game. Black blocks on top, and Yu Jin was thinking maybe oh well you just gonna play out that. You just gonna probably just play out this one. And then uh, maybe something like this. I don't know. Uh, you know. Uh, something like this, right? Probably Eugene was, uh, you know, uh, expecting something like this. Uh, but in fact, Koji had a better idea, right? That is for uh, for him to now attach at, at R12. So uh, when I see these two moves on board, I was like, wow, I have to present this to my viewers. So let's say, for example, if black defense here, because tactically, 
this does not work for black, right? Uh, these two stones are way too weak to fight here. So if black hops back, uh, white's going to pull the stone back. And then if black connects, and all of a sudden, we can see that black stones are over-concentrated on this area. And then white is very comfortably uh, expanding himself, uh, making sure like th this thing is never going to work again. Uh, let's say, for example, that this thing is never going to work again because I can just um, get myself back easily. Very nice, uh, very nice position for white, mostly because uh, you, you, you look at the efficiency comparison uh, between the two groups, we can clearly see that white is leading. So that's the idea actually of this peep and then attach is to create over concentration uh, for black here. And this is probably the most creative uh, way that I have seen uh, to create over concentration. It shows the understanding of Go that Kuja has, the extraordinary understanding of Go. Uh, that is, you know, just exchange once and then attach. Uh, such beautifully uh, played moves. And for a lot of people, uh, you know, I might just be tempted to like play, maybe I, I would descend instead of connecting, but I would, uh, I would still form over concentration for myself and then just giving uh, Kuja the lead, uh, mostly because I don't see any other ways to deal with this, right? When he peeps in, I have to defend. When he attaches, I cannot fight. I can I can only back. Uh, so yeah, that's just the power of ideas. Uh, that is just, you know, understanding that wins you the game, right? Really, you can't really say that black played any bad moves in this in this scenario, but then bad, black is just behind. So very, very nice idea. So that's why in the actual game, Eugene decided to, to Tanuki, right? So she does not want to fall behind, so she decided to Tanuki. Uh, and this shows you the, um, when pros play, uh, their ideas are just at the next level, right? So really like this idea, right? Forming a wall here and then saying, hey, why don't you fall, uh, why don't you make another wall here? Uh, so now, not only your corner, thanks to my Q17 stone is not yours, but also this wall uh, is not doing anything. While my my territory is all solid and sound and, and very efficient. So that's uh, more or less the idea I wanna uh, present to you. Uh, maybe I'll just want to add a, a note here, uh, is that um, if you don't like the follow-up of Block's Invasion at Q8, uh, you can immediately uh, think about just just get rid of it right at this point um, so so this is pretty good uh, for for white already right you fix your problems um, and then black got a lot of thickness uh, later on if you do this black is probably gonna fight you here uh, black is not gonna let white live here black's definitely not going to block it in this direction right so rather he's gonna use uh, his thickness to fight you like this but that's what's, that's just what I'm saying, right? Like if you don't want uh, this, you, you know, I mean, you, if you don't, uh, your level, none of us have the Kuji's um, understanding of Go. Uh, but if you just want a solid move that prevents the Q8, uh, that's just a side note, you can uh, play out like this, it's no problem. This is an equal game moving on. Uh, you can go ahead and start playing somewhere else. Uh, so, um, so hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about the follow-ups over here and also, you know, uh, the inspiration moves from Kuji. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video.